fellow crafters and hair enthusiasts. Um, I'm going to be doing a two-part series on making your own dreadlocks. And this week I will start off with making woolen dreadlocks, both double-ended ones and single-ended dreadlocks. For this you will need um, a bowl of hot water, um, some soap. I'm using olive soap because it's nice on my hands. But you can also use ordinary dish soap, that will work just as well. Um, it's just a bit rougher on your hands. You will need some wool and I would advise you to go for merino wool because it's nice and soft and um, very willing to uh, felt. And I have quite a cool one with three colours in them. But you can just also get it in one colour and add uh, colours yourself but this is already pre-mixed which I think is quite cool. Uh, you need some bubble wrap and I would advise you to put a towel down on your desk because it can got, get a bit damp and I'm going to be using a grater to grate my um, soap. And that's pretty much all you need, so let's get started. Starting off with this bowl of water, making a nice soapy mixture. It's hot water, just from the tap. Grating some of the soap into it. the soap together. Then uh, you need to determine if you want to make a, a single or a double ended uh, dreadlock. Um, do note that when you sort of measure them against your head is that they will get a bit longer when you felt them. So um, this could easily be on my current hair length a double ended one so I'm gonna start off with this a double ended dreadlock. So you want to put this in your water bowl, submerge it and maybe leave it in for a little while, make sure it's nice and wet, and then take it out, put the bowl aside. It does, does need to be damp, but it doesn't need to be dripping. And then what you start to do is roll it on your bubble wrap, like so. And I like it nice, uh, the pattern nice and twisted, so I'm just gonna hold one end while I rub the other. So you get that nice little pattern going there. And then when you have it sort of in the shape you want, you take your bubble wrap and start rubbing it. But do reshape it again by rolling it like so, because otherwise it will not stay round. It's not quite felted yet, that will take a while. Now, once you think it will stay together, start rubbing it in a ball against the bubble wrap, and then roll again. Keep that round shape. Basically just mechanical action and soap, that will do it. And if you need to, you feel like it's not really felting properly, just put it back in the soapy bowl more soap in there and repeat. Because of the texture of the bubble wrap <clears throat> it will felt it on all sides while you're rolling it like so. And this will take quite a bit of elbow grease to get it ready. <laughs> but I quite like enjoy it. I quite enjoy felting so that seems to be helping. I'm just gonna move the towel a little bit out of the way so I can roll it in the bubble wrap on my table. See so yeah, how it sort of gets a little bit puckered. That's what you want because that means it's shrinking and felting. It can be quite rough once you're past that pre-felting stage. We feel like it's not gonna fall apart anymore. Make sure to roll it again a couple of times after you've done that sort of thing because otherwise you might lose the round shape. You can use different types of wool, um, but merino is just a wool that is very soft and easy to felt. Just making it a bit easier in yourself. It's also readily available, which helps. Got my wool off of uh, eBay, a German girl. So I would say, very quick delivery. Right, I think this one is starting to look good. 
you're done and you want to hold it under the cold tap or put it in a bowl of cold water that will help the, help the follicles of the hair to close and um, properly lock the felt into place and also rinse out some of the, the soap. So that's a double-ended thread. Uh, I was also going to show you a single-ended thread. Obviously you will have to start with a shorter bit of material. Starting off, I'm doing a different colour now with that one. And what you want to do is sort of already, when you're dunking it into the soapy water, sort of form a loop, like so, and wet that together while you keep your finger in one end. Form a loop, put your finger in there, and then wet it. Already in the bowl, sort of start to rub it. So you form that loop on one end. I'm going to be doing this. Stroke it. And now you want to may want to grab a little bit more wool. I found this works the best if you just grab some dry wool and wrap a little bit around to keep that end in that little loop. So wrap that then dump that in the water again. And then just start rubbing it. You will see when the wool is starting to fill properly, it will come sort of like a little bit puckered. And that's when you know you're getting there. On the end there. And that's a single and a dreadlock. It still needs to be washed out under the top, but that's that. Now I wanted to take a moment to show you how to put these dreadlocks in your hair. That's why I left my hair down today. With these single-ended ones, it's actually the easiest ones to put in. What you'll need to do is section off a bit of hair, and I'm just gonna hide to the top underneath so you don't really see it. So I'm gonna clip that hair out of the way and grab a section here. Just and you wanna just grab that section, take your dread, and poke your hair through that loop of the dread. This can be a little bit tricky if your loop is kind of small and your section is big, but manage. Like so. And bring it as close to your head as you can. And then split your section of hair into two. And what you actually basically do is braiding, but because the thread is much bigger than the two strands, it's easier um, to explain it as you're crisscrossing both strands underneath the thread and then on top of the red, crisscrossing them, crisscrossing at the bottom, crisscrossing them at the top, crisscrossing them at the bottom, and crisscrossing them at the top. And you may want to sort of not go all the way down, but stop halfway or one third of the way and just keep crossing in one place until you have only short bits of hair left and then you want to take a small hairband either a transparent one or I have very thin blue ones here like this and wrap that around your hair and your braid like that and once you let your clipped hair down, you won't be able to see the top very much anymore. So it will just be a dread sort of hanging amongst your hair. Now, with the double-ended dreadlocks, uh, it's a bit trickier. <clears throat> but you want to fold them in half, figure out where the middle is. Then unfold them. And grab a section. First split that in two. It's usually easier. Place the middle of the dreadlock sort of on top of your head 
and those two sections around the double-ended dreadlock. And then do the same thing again. And then secure an elastic band again. Now, you've done one side, but you have to also do the other side. What you want to do is grab a section right next to the other one. Um, what you can also do with the double-ended ones, and this may, may make it a little bit easier, is grab them like that, fold them over, and then put an elastic, like a small elastic, take a little elastic band and sort of form that loop that you didn't have on the top like that and if you wanted to lay completely flat against your head you may want to repeat the same with the other end of it you can also if you're doing your whole head you're obviously going to see the tops but what you can also do is use these loops um, to uh, thread an elastic to through and use them as a fall as it is called um, which means you have an elastic to tie it around a ponytail or a bun and you will you can attach them around your hair like that. But I'll show that a bit better in my next um, part of this series, which is going to be synthetic dreadlocks. So that's how you install the single-ended and the double-ended dreadlocks. For this reason that you get this loop here at the top, I prefer the single-ended dreads if you're going to break them in. Um, but if you're, for example, making a fall, then this will work fine as well. But they're easier to, um, to make with felt. Um, what you can also do if the loop is not properly working uh, for you um, is put a little elastic around, just loop the top over and then put an elastic there and then you can use it as I showed you. I hope in this video I've showed you how to make felt threads. It's actually quite simple and uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, thank you all for watching. Hello to all my new subscribers. I've seen a lot of people subscribe in the past uh, week and um, also go check out my Facebook and my other social media and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next week.